be recorded and I'm going to be embarrassed. So what I've spent the last um, couple of nights doing is I've gone through the book again. I've read the book from front to back again. And as I've gone through, I've taken notes. Okay. Thank you, Sam. I'm doing well, huh? If I was sitting in the exam, I would do super well. So go from front to back and I've taken notes. A lot of the notes that I've taken are just general quotes from the text. Okay, So they're just um, things people say, things that are in the, in the text. Um, as well, there's also a number of observations about the characters, about the themes, about those sorts of things. So I know that um, obviously it's a little bit easier for me, English being my first language, but this is a really, really good idea for you guys as well to do, particularly in preparation for the exam. Um, obviously, I'm figuring that most of you are going to write on no sugar. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're going to write on this one. But whichever one you decide that you're going to write on, this is a really, really good way to make sure that you lock that stuff in your head and that you've got a bank of quotes to use. The other really important thing too is by writing it down myself, it's now in my head. I now know the book better because I've done this. So if you go through something and you just highlight it, you're really not locking that into your mind. Okay, you're really not. If you go through and you write it out yourself and you use, you make an observation and an analysis of those points, then it's really good for you. So we're going to go through this today. I'm going to take you through what I've written. I'm going to take you through the notes. And we're going to have a discussion about some of the characters. We're going to have a discussion about some of the events. And we're going to get your feeling for a bunch of the characters. Can I get a hands up? Who likes Suleiman? The main character, the boy. Who likes him? A little bit? Who likes him? Five out of ten. Six out of ten. Four out of ten. Five? Yeah, he's all right. Why don't you like him? He's challenged. Yeah, he's just, he's challenged. He's challenged. He's I mean, you know, but he, he doesn't show much, like, really good personality. Yeah. He's a really normal person. Yeah, I think so. I agree with that. I think that he doesn't show a lot of personality. And the personality traits that he does show are often negative. So he betrays his father. He betrays his father's friends. And he betrays his, his best friend. So for Suleiman, I mean, almost his defining characteristic is betrayal. Who does he not betray? There's someone that he never betrays. His mother, that's right. He always keeps a secret close, doesn't he? And he always protects his mother. So, from the very top, set in Tripoli, Libya, 1979. See, these are the little details you get when you read it carefully. So, 1979, and Suleiman is nine years old. I know we've had a bit of a thought about how old he is. He is nine. When you're nine, how much of the world do you understand? Not much. And that is reflected in the story that he tells. Okay, a lot of what goes on around him he doesn't understand or he misinterprets however I'm going to argue today that he should do better that there are some things that occurred that he understands and then still does the wrong thing okay he knows that the revolutionary committee who are looking for his father are bad people he knows that they are out to hurt his family and yet he goes along with them he acquiesces he helps them he betrays his family. So, his mother is an alcoholic. She hadn't fallen asleep until the sky was grey with dawn and begged him not to tell, not to tell. Why? I mean, obviously being an alcoholic is, is bad in any society. Why is it particularly bad in Libya? Outlawed. Yeah? Is that what you said, Sam? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, of co- like, like in a separation... Where are we? What kind of culture are we in? Dictatorship. Yeah, we're in a dictatorship. We're also, there's another defining thing, I think I heard it before. What, what are the other two similarities between Libya and uh, Iran? Religious. Religious, that's right. So they're both Islamic countries, yeah? They're both countries that Islam forms a large basis of their um, you know, legal code. So under Islam, you can't drink. Drinking is illegal. So not only, you know, is she an alcoholic, she's also breaking the law. And it's incredibly dangerous for her and for her family. Of course, there are reasons why she does this that we'll get into and discuss. Um, she is not a character. She is a character that does, deserves much sympathy. Okay, so Baba never found out about Mama's illness. She only felt ill when he was away on business. So she doesn't drink when he's home. So when her husband is home, when Baba is home, father, she doesn't drink. It's only when he's absent that she drinks. And who's left to look after her? Yeah, 
Suleiman, so a nine-year-old boy is basically left to, to look after her. What's one of the most dangerous things that she does while she's drunk? She forgot to turn off the, um, the gas. The gas, yeah. Yeah, she nearly blows the house up. I was reading it and looking at it, and I was thinking that maybe she's actually trying to commit suicide. So this is after the Revolutionary go um, Committee goes through her house and raids the house, and she knows that they're in really deep trouble. It's possible that she's actually trying to kill herself and Suleiman at that time. But that's up for debate. Hearing all the things she had told me swim and repeat in my head. Just what exactly are these things? What does she tell him when she drinks? Story. Stories. What story in particular? Uh, Sorry? The um, princess and the king? Yeah. And there's another story too, a story from her own past. The marriage, yeah, the marriage. And what does she call it? What does she call her marriage? What does she call her marriage day? <coughs> she assigns a colour to it. What was that? Black day. That's right, yeah, she calls it her black day. So, night after night, when, when his father is away, <coughs> Solomon is left to look after his mother, who drinks considerably, and then, as she gets more and more drunk, she tells Solomon about... Her marriage. <coughs> Bless you. She unburdens herself to this nine-year-old boy. Where do they spend most of their nights? When father's away, where does he spend his night? The night most often. Have a guess. I'll turn the recording off. Telling stories. Yeah, telling stories. And where, do, like, where? Where do the stories? Where, do, where does she tell him these stories? Where do they go? Yeah, in her bed. Okay, so when the father's away, he spends the night in his mother's bed. She gets drunk and she tells him about her marriage. And in particular, the first night. So Solomon has to deal with a lot for a nine-year-old boy. I think that that's probably something that he doesn't need to hear about most nights. But she unburdens it to him. The beggar. So Balul... Make sure you got his name, make sure you get it right. <clears throat> so Suleiman is the boy, Balu is the beggar. Mama and Baba are acceptable for the parents. What's, Babu, what's Bahul's um, catchphrase? What does he say all the time? What does it say? I see you, I see you, all the time. What is this a metaphor for? Who else sees everything? Sees everything, hears everything, watches everything. The spies. The spies, yeah. The sun, did you say the sun? Yeah, the sun. So the sun is a metaphor for the secret police. Okay, so in Libya at this time, the secret police see everything, hear everything, <coughs> watch everything. And behold, I see you, I see you. There's more to this than just these words. He watches and observes and spies on people. He knows their secrets. What are the big secrets of our family, of this family? Yeah, the father has different political ideas. The father's trying to undermine Gaddafi's government and right. What's the other big secret? We just talked about it. What does she do at night when he's not home? Drinks, yeah. So the father is a political activist who's actively trying to undermine the Gaddafi regime. And the mother... Where does she buy her alcohol? Remember who? The baker. She gets it from the baker when she buys the bread. I began to feel sorry and sad on how such morning she was always generous and embarrassed. So there's two sides to his mother. There's the drunk side and there's the not drunk side. So the next day after she's drunk, she feels embarrassed and, and, and tries to buy his forgiveness. So they'll often go for meals. She'll take him on drives. They'll go to the beach. They'll do nice things. 
and he's always um, like reluctant to join in. Okay, so it takes him <coughs> most of the day before he likes her again. You know, he, he feels he feels angry towards her for drinking. He feels angry towards her for him having to hear about these stories. And it takes time for him to forgive her. But she loves him, and he loves her very much. But it's this very dangerous, difficult relationship where, you know, he's under a, he's under a huge amount of pressure here. And so the next day she will take him places and buy him food. It was one of the places that they like to go in particular. They go there very early on in the book. Yeah, an Italian cafe. Yeah, definitely. So they go to the Italian cafe, um, and she buys him all this special food, and he refuses to eat because he's mad at her. Uh, Ustaf Rashid, a very important character. So that's one of Baba's very closest friends. He's also the father of... Kareem. Yeah. <coughs> so he's Kareem's father, who is Suleiman's best friend. Kareem is 12, so he's older than Suleiman, and Suleiman looks up to him um, very much. Okay, so he looks up to Kareem, he idolises him, he follows him, he um, you know, wants, wants, wants to be respected by him, and they, they have a very close relationship at the start. Ustaz Rashid is a, a close friend of his father, and idolises and looks up to his father. So Suleiman's father is the leader of this revolutionary group. He's the leader of this democratic group. Okay, and he has people who follow him. And Ustaf Rashid is one of them. He teaches art history and is Kareem's father. <coughs> mm. He sees his father and his father does not acknowledge him. Because his father is working. His father is working on bringing democracy. And they see him in Martyr's Square, in a special building. What's on the shutters? You know, no color of the shutters are. So you've got green shutters, which are the, the green is the color of the revolution, so it's ironic that they use it. And this is the sign. This is the um, signal that they're plotting. Okay, so when they hang a red towel outside the window, that means that a meeting is happening. <clears throat> yeah, it's a symbol. Yeah. And Suleiman will later tell the secret police this. Suleiman will later tell the secret police that this is what this means. The innocent, the imam of our local mosque, had told me, had no cause for fear. Only the guilty live in fear. Is this true in Libya at this time? <clears throat> Who lives in fear? <clears throat> Everyone, yeah. Everyone, because you can be disappeared like that. Yeah? The saying is, they can, make, they can put you behind the sun. Okay, get that saying down. This thing wants to work. It does not want to work. You can be put behind the sun. Okay? What's that? The, the sun. It did say that Yeah. So the sun is Gaddafi. The sun is the government. The guide. The guide definitely says many, many names for him. So. The sun is, is Gaddafi and the Gaddafi spies. And the reason we call it, they call it the sun is because the sun shines on everything. Look out the window. Yeah, look, look. Everything is in the sun. Of course, in Libya, where it's the desert, it's sunny all the time. So always, you're always being watched. You're always in the sun. Okay, and what they say, the saying is you need to walk beside the wall. Okay? So if you walk beside the wall, if I walk beside the building here, what am I in? So in Libya, you need to learn to walk beside the wall. And that means not doing anything that will bring the sun onto you. It also means following the rules. 
Okay? If you follow the rules of society, if you walk beside the wall, if you stay out of the sun, then you will probably be safe. But if you stray outside into the sun, then they will put you behind the sun. And what happens behind the sun? Or you're incredibly tortured. Yeah. There's a chilling moment at the end of the book where, um, as after the father has recovered from his torture, when he goes upstairs and he takes Suleiman up onto the roof and Suleiman sees his face for the first time since the beating and he just points to a scar on the side of his head and he says to Suleiman, he says, that's where they put out their cigarettes. So that's what happens when you get put behind the sun. If you do not walk beside the wall. So, all people fear. All people live in fear in Libya. This is Mala to Suleiman. Lord, you work. Gotcha. We are two halves of the same soul. Two open pages of the same book. So Mama is constantly telling Suleiman how special he is to her, how much she loves him. What does she also say to him all the time? There's one thing that she always says. There's a common phrase that she uses. It involves an animal. You are going to be my prince. You will be my prince to take me away. You're going to take me away on a horse. And that, of course, is a link to the shells and frouses, whatever it is. The, um, I can't say it. The, um, the, the, the um, myth, the fairy tale that she tells him. You know, the one about the girl who has to, every day, beg the emperor not to die for one more day. Suleiman responds, with these words felt like a gift I didn't want. It's painful for him. It's too much. It's too heavy. She is so damaged. She is so, um, so messed up that he doesn't want that burden. So when she says this to him, it's not like a mother saying, I love you and you know, I want to look after you. It's like you have to bear my burdens too. You have to carry the weight that I have as well. You have to carry the black day. You have to carry the drinking. You have to carry all of this. And here we have a description of what it's like when she gets drunk and starts to talk to him. Just when sleep was, sleep was curling itself around me, she started her telling. Her mouth beside my ear, the smell of her medicines. What's the medicine? Alcohol. Alcohol. Alive in the room. Notice, too, that what she is telling him is not explicitly explained. Very rarely does the writer go into specifics about what she says to him. We know only that it's about her marriage and, in particular, how she came to be married. Who can tell me that story, how she came to be married? With a boy, that's right. So she was at a coffee shop talking to a boy and they were holding hands under the table and her uncle saw. I think her uncle or maybe a neighbour. I'm pretty sure it's her uncle, but maybe not. No, I think it's um, her brother. Her brother? Oh, of course, it's Suleiman's uncle, sorry. Suleiman's uncle. So her brother sees and he tells the family. And how does the family respond? What do they do to her? The father is getting really angry and feel like she's not clean. Yeah. So she's just like she wants her to marry someone yeah. that she doesn't like. That she doesn't even know. She's never met him before in her uh, life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they lock her in a room. They lock her in a room for 40 days. For 40 days they lock her in her room because she held hands with a boy at a coffee shop. That's great. Yep. And then they marry her to his father, to Baba. And Baba is 22 or 23? How old is she? 14, yeah. So 14, yeah. yeah. So he is much, much older than her. She's just a little girl. She's only 14. 
what does the father say on the night of marriage? What does he do? What does he get? He gets something. He gets out a gun. He gets his gun. And he says basically that if she's not a virgin, I'm going to kill her. The, the, the death set that yep. yep. So on, the, on her marriage night, he gets his gun and he says, if she's not a virgin, I will kill her. So, do we start to understand why she's sick? Yeah? Why she has an illness? Why she drinks? Why she's sad? Yeah. Yeah. Forced to marry a man eight years older than her who she's never met before, who she doesn't love. And her own family members don't even care about her. Yeah, her own family members. Her brother just so bad, telling things to the family and then her yeah. Yeah, it was going to kill her. Like, so, yeah. So not only, like, like her family in many ways causes her, her suffering, you know what I mean? Like, she has to marry this guy she doesn't even know because of her family. And she's forced into it. She has no, she has no, um, no will, no say, no nothing. And that's what she tells Solomon. <coughs> That's the story that she tells night after night into his ear. The only thing that matters mattered were in the past, and what mattered most was how she and Bala came to be married that black day. So the story she tells is about her marriage and her rape. Night after night. Can you see now why it's a gift he does not necessarily want? And he always keeps it secret. He always, he never betrays her. He betrays everybody else, but he will not betray her. <clears throat> Although I feared those nights when we were alone and she was ill, I never wanted her to stop talking. Her story was mine. It bound us, turned us into one. So he, it's not simple. He both loves and hates it. It makes him feel special. It makes him feel important. It binds them together very, very closely. <clears throat> He knows more about her than, than his father does. Yeah, that's why I found a little weird that when the, that coming back to the family and then when the mom and dad was like being alone in the room and he sort of wanted to go in and protect the mother. Yeah. So yeah. normal kids would just be like, leave parents alone, but he just tried to stop yeah. or something. So he's kind of... I feel like he has more responsibility than the father does. Very true. Also, how, when they're alone in the room, does, is she happy? There's two times. There's two times where they have sex. And the first time, the one you're talking about, she seems unhappy. Yeah? She, she, he thinks that she's in pain. He thinks that she is being hurt. And the second time, later in the book, she enjoys it. But at this stage, she doesn't love her husband. She doesn't love him. But she has to do, she has to cook and clean and do this. And he wants to protect her. <clears throat> Before she is married, she takes pills. What pills does she take? What does she take? Birth control. Birth control. How many? Too many. She takes a lot because she really doesn't want to get pregnant. And that makes her sick. And she vomits them up. And she gets pregnant. And that's Suleiman. So she often says to him... When, when, when she had Suleiman, like 16... I think... Seven, yes... 17. Is it? So it's not that it's not that night? Because I remember she actually had Suleiman really young and they ate 
Like the mother and the son. Yeah, maybe, uh, not that different. Not, not that, yeah. It might be. It might be about fifteen. It might be that first night. I think it's that first night. Yeah, because she says like you, I didn't want you. You know, what I mean, I tried to stop you from occurring, but I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so happy that you're alive. So she didn't want him, but she loves him when it happens. If you didn't turn out virtuous and true, your father was prepared to take your life. So she's talking about herself here. And I've just written, what kind of place is this? Who are these people? Who are these people? What kind of place is this? If you tell a living soul and I die, my life will be on your neck. Is that a nice thing to tell a nine-year-old kid? No. No. Yeah, that's his mum, says Solomon. Yeah, she says, if you, if you tell a living soul, I, I will die, my life will be on your neck. So, if you tell this great big secret, then I will die, and it will be your fault. That's a lot of pressure for a little kid. He loves, so I've just got, and then I've got, just got some notes here. He loves her, he fears her, he fears for her, he, he, wants, he feels responsible for her, he guards her, he protects her, he's angry at her, he enjoys the intimacy, but it is poisonous. Just a few comments about Solomon and about their relationship. These are all, you know, these are all phrases that you can use when you write. Yeah? Each one of these is a little bit different, isn't it? I mean, some are very different. Loves and fears are very different. But he fears her and he fears for her. Similar but different. Use, I'll say, you can all see this. When you write, use them. You're more than welcome to go through and use all these quotes, all these marks, all these notes. Okay, to help you write your essays. So, one time he nearly tells Kareem, he says to Kareem, uh, my mother is ill. And Kareem responds, all women are ill. Kareem says, mama bleeds all the time. Again, an example of the sexism in Libyan culture. So he's just a boy, so he's, only, he's only 12 years old. And he already thinks that women are sick and women are ill and, and women are weak. I wanted so much to be like Kareem. Okay, so... Solomon looks up to Kareem a lot. How does he betray Kareem in the end? He does two things. Can we remember? Have we read it? Calls Kareem's father a traitor. Remember they're playing the, they're playing this game, my land, your land, with the knife. So they're playing this knife game, and Kareem they have a fight, and he, he says to Kareem in front of everybody, everybody knows your father's a traitor, and he can't even get the word out. He can't even get the word traitor out before he can say the word traitor. Bang. Kareem's on top of him, beating him up. Then Kareem lets him up, and he says another secret. He asks Kareem, how's your beloved? How's your girlfriend? And Kareem has a crush on a girl in his class that he has told Solomon. So he's told Solomon this really deep secret, yeah? This thing that he doesn't want anybody else to know, but he wants to share. So he's told Solomon his deepest secret that he has a crush on this girl, and Solomon tells everybody. Once again, Solomon betrays. He's distant from his father. He says that he actually feels closest to his father when he's observing him unknown. So his father might be reading or smoking or, or, or eating. And Solomon sits and watches. And that's when he feels closest to his father. Not when they talk, but when he can just watch his father unobserved. His father is a loving man, but removed. Kurt. So Kurt is like when you... You don't give someone very much. Okay, he, he doesn't talk a lot with Suleiman. He's very sharp with him, yeah? <clears throat> and he's not a man prone to outward displays of affection. So he doesn't hug or um, you know, cuddle Suleiman very much. Suleiman's favourite thing to do with his father is to kiss his hand. So on the way back from school, 
Suleiman's father um, and a number of other notable local men all sit around drinking coffee, smoking, as you do. And his father will always call him up. Suleiman, Suleiman, come and say hello to my friends. You know what I mean? He said, meet all the friends. And Suleiman feels most loved by his father in that moment. Yeah? And we can understand why. Like his father's proud of him. You know what I mean? Like he's sitting there with all his mates and then Suleiman walks past and he introduces his son to all his friends. He's proud of his son. You know, meet my son, meet my son. It's lovely. But that's the most that he really gets. His father doesn't do this otherwise. It's, it's mainly in public like that. Um Masood. Who can tell me what Um Masood looks like? It's funny. Can you tell me, Ember? I can't remember. Is that the, the spy one? The wife, yeah, the wife, yeah, yeah. So it's not the beggar, it's the. It's Jaffer's wife. Is his father close to him? But is that the one that he told Suleiman his friend with his father? No. No, no, so, no, not that one. Not Sharif, not the guy in the car. So Umm Masood is the wife of Ustaf Jaffa, who is a big deal in the party. He's a big deal in the revolutionary committee. He's close to the government. He's close to the son. Yeah, he is, he is, the son is, likes him. And so there's very dangerous. If you upset him or her, they can make you go behind the son. She's fat, rude, a gossip, a viper. She's a threat. She's a nasty piece of work. Yeah, she's a she's a bad person. She's someone you cannot upset because she will inform on you to the authorities. Okay, so if you do something bad, or if she finds out something about you, she will tell the police. Yet she does one thing that Suleiman and particularly Mama will be thankful for forever. She saves his father. So when his father's taken away, Mama goes to her and begs her, save him. Talk to your husband, you can save him. Talk to your husband, please save his life. And Mama brings a big cake and she's like, I've always liked you. You're always so smart and funny. So she's lying. Yeah? She hates the woman. Absolutely hates her. But has to beg her for her husband's life. <clears throat> and as much as I dislike Umm Masood, she does save his life. So she has one redeeming feature. Of course, when he comes back, he's not in great shape. But, you know, at least he's not dead. No one is ever beyond their reach. No one is ever safe from the sun. Ever. They can take you at any time. So... Ustaf Rashid is taken away. So Karim's father is taken away by the revolutionary men. And they broadcast his interrogation publicly. So at night, they beat him and they torture him. And during the day, they put him on TV. And make him confess. What does he do? He does one very, very brave thing. He does many brave things, but he does one especially brave thing. What's that? That's right. He doesn't betray Solomon's father. He does not betray the leader. They ask him, was this person there? Yes. Was this person there? Yes. Was Ba Solomon? Was he there? No. And then they turn the TV off. 
So they're interrogating him, he's on the chair. And they're asking him these questions. And he says no. And then they flick the switch and he's not on TV anymore. What are they doing? They torture him first and then yeah, they execute him later. His execution is publicly broadcast on TV. Can you imagine that? Like, we go home tonight and watch an execution. It's just crazy, isn't it? Just crazy. So, this, they use terror, they use fear. They use it to control people and they use it to make them do what they say. He didn't argue or beg. I've never seen Baba cry before. I cannot understand how reading something beautiful made him cry. So, his father is a good man. His father believes in, in hope and freedom. His father is fighting for something good. Does Mama think this? No. What does Mama think? Yeah, that's right. He's not responsible for his... You can speak up, Sam. Speak up. (laughs) So, he's not responsible for his family. That he is um, putting them at risk. She always tells him, walk beside the wall. Walk beside the wall. Also, she doesn't respect what he does. She doesn't think that he's going to be able to change their country. He says, what are you doing? You're making a few leaflets... You excite a few students. You're not going to be able to change the world. So she's angry at him for putting their family in danger. And she's angry at him. And she doesn't respect what he does. She doesn't value what he does. So, Um Masood, our neighborhood gossip, visits. And she's like, oh, Have you seen that trader? That trader, Ustaz Rashid, have you seen him on TV being interrogated? They always find the traitors in the end. They always get them. And she's studying her... And then Mama and Baba are like, he's not a traitor. He's a good man. And Masood looks at her fingers and smiles. Smiles as if knowing, as if some old suspicion had been confirmed. So what does she think now? Exactly, exactly. Mama tells Sulma to stay away from Kareem. She doesn't want her family associated with the arrest and the treachery accusations. Now, is this a planned strategy between the two families? Or is this something that she just does separately? It's never really made clear. Do you know what I mean? Like, do they try and isolate each other so that they don't get caught? Like, do they talk about it and say, we shouldn't see each other? Or does Mama just say, stay away from them? I think it's the second one. I think she just said, just stay away. That's what I think. Now, here's the boy. A certain sadness had entered Kareem's eyes the day Ustas Rashid was taken. Understandable. Yeah? His father's been taken away. His father's being interrogated on live TV. Kareem is sad. This is what, like, this is the interesting thing. So, these are good men doing the right thing. Yeah? They are trying to end a dictatorship. They're trying to end a bad government. But Kareem is embarrassed about his father being taken. And so is Suleiman in the end. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, they are ashamed that their fathers have been taken away not proud I can understand why they would feel sad you definitely you would feel sad but I think you would also feel proud why do they not feel proud why do they feel ashamed sorry right Exactly, that's right. They don't understand just what, what it is that these guys are doing. And 
when you grow up in a place like that, like you're told from like till you're, when you're this big, you know, the guide is great, the guide is wise, the guys, the guide and the prophet are one. Yeah? All the time, from a little child, you're told, you know, the, respect the guide, respect the prophet, blah, 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 blah. So you're mo- they're brainwashed. They're brainwashed from a little, from a little age, from a young age. The children don't know. So, like, you're saying that the father doesn't tell the children what he does and protects them from it? Yeah. 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 So, that, they're not even really sure. So, and this is, really, this is interesting here. It wasn't the sadness of longing. So this is Kareem's eyes. It wasn't the sadness of longing. It was the sadness of betrayal. The silent sadness that comes from being let down. Who has let Kareem down? Not yet, not yet. This is before. He will later. But when his father's taken, so when his father's taken, he looks sad. And it's the sadness of betrayal. I was thinking about this. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Maybe Solomon's father. Maybe. Maybe his own father. Maybe he feels that his own father has betrayed him. Yeah? By, you know, by doing these things. Like, his father's taken away, his father's a traitor, maybe he feels betrayed. Yeah. Yeah. And so Kareem just gets sad. He just gets sad. Um, and then Baba comes home. She looks beautiful. So Mama always looks beautiful when, the, when he comes home. And she says to him, you have chosen a dead end road. She's against it, yeah? You've done the wrong thing. You've chosen a dead end road. Dead, literally. You will die if you do this. And he says, I need you. So, even though they don't love each other the way that we would probably understand it, they still, there's still something there, isn't there? There's still a very close relationship. Like, he comes home and he says, I need you. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't say, shut up. I'll do what I want. <laughs> yeah? He doesn't. He comes home and he says, listen, I need you. I need you right now. So, their relationship is complicated. It's definitely not hateful. It's not full of hate. It's full of something else. Now, here we go. This is where I get on my high horse. Solomon is totally ignorant of what is happening. I think, how can he not realise what these events mean? This is his most unlikable feature. I don't find it believable. How old is he meant to be? So he's nine. Yet he cannot comprehend the world around him in any meaningful way. I don't know. I grew up in a family that was, you know, politics since I was this tall. Yeah? You understand. You understand things. If the secret police come through your house, you understand. Yeah? If Baba's coming home, he's going... And then... And then Solomon walks past you. Something's happening, yeah? He's linked. His father is against the son. Yeah? Surely you can figure this out. This is my belief. Surely he can figure this out. Yet he has no idea. He saves one of the books. So the police come. They, raid the, they nearly raid the house. Um, Musa is able to distract them with food and, and cigarettes. And then they leave. And then they burn everything. Yeah? Remember this? Yeah? And what does he do? Keeps a book. What's he thinking? And then what does he do with the book? Later. He gives it to the secret police. And I would be disappointed in my son. <laughs> I would be disappointed in my son if he did this. So this is one of the things, this is one of the things about the book that, that I don't like. I don't like the fact that he is so ignorant of it. So? Yeah, yeah. You know, and yes, he's a little kid, and nine is young, like nine is very young. But, I mean, that's like grade three. He just wants attention. Yes. Yes. 
At one time he says that. He goes to the secret police and he's like, I'm happy to see you because you give me attention. I'm like, <laughs> these are the guys that are torturing his father. So, you know, this is, Suleiman's an interesting character. Like, you feel for him, yeah? So he spends hours every night trying to protect his drunk mother from blowing up the house. Okay, that's hard. But then, the next day, he gives democracy now to the secret police. He's an interesting character. Anyway, so Baba comes home. I can feel him smile, smiling proudly at me and made my chest tickle. So he wants his father's attention and he wants his father's love and he wants his father's admiration. Yeah, as we all do. And when he gets it, it makes him feel special. It was such a relief now that Baba was home. Now everything could be normal again, I thought. Now I can leave the house without worrying. Why is this a, um, an interesting sentence? Is everything about to be normal? What's going to happen? True, definitely. So that's going to stop. But something else is going to happen. So he's like, next door neighbours are raided. His father rushes home, whispers all this stuff, and then disappears again. It's not going to be normal. It's about to get much, much worse. It's about to get really bad. And here we go. Last one before we take a break. The foolish dreamers, and it's foolish and irresponsible to encourage them. Mama to Musa. Here it's either silence or exile. Walk by the wall or leave. So she's talking to Musa. And she's saying, don't encourage these people. Don't encourage their dreams. Don't encourage their dreams of democracy because if you do, you will get them killed. Take four. Go for a walk. Get a drink of water. Or don't go anywhere. Sit there and stretch. Whatever you want to do. I'll see you. Stretch, yeah.